Hi everyone. This video discusses about problems on general fiction. And I have presented here three problems and more problems will be uh, discussed or uploaded in my YouTube channel. So if you're still new to my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell so that you will be updated in my future videos which are intended to help you in your studies and I hope that these videos will help you improve in your um, in your test, in your exams or in your performance with the different evaluations that your that your teachers may give you and I hope that you will enjoy watching and you can follow the explanations. Here we go. This is the first problem. Determine the force P that will cause impending rotation of the cylinder of weight W against the action of friction. The coefficient of friction of all surfaces of contact is denoted by mu. Express your answer in terms of W and mu. So this is the figure. We will call the normal reaction here as N1 and the weight of course the applied load <coughs> then this is N1 so FP will cause this uh, the cylinder to rotate clockwise so the resistance should be will cause counterclockwise so it should be upward and it is equal to mu times N1 here, here also if the reaction is N2 normal reaction then friction force should be in to the right so that it counters the clockwise moment of P or and it produces counterclockwise about the center. So this is equal to mu times N2. So first summation forces X equals 0 so mu N2 minus N1 equals 0 or mu N2 equals N1. If we multiply everything both sides by mu so we have mu square N2 equals mu N1. Then summation forces y equals 0, so n2 plus p plus mu n1 minus w equals 0. Or replacing mu n1 here by mu square n2, so n2 plus p plus mu square n2 equals w. Then the moment of p about the origin is clockwise, so p times r, then minus mu n1 times r minus mu n2 times r equals 0. So by the way, if we simplify this equation here, so we have p equals w, then n2 is common, n2 times 1 plus mu square. So if we transpose it to the right, it becomes negative n2 quantity mu square plus 1. So I said if we sum up moment about o equals 0, so p times r minus mu n times r minus mu n2 times r equals 0, so cancelling out r, so p is mu n1 plus mu n2. So replacing uh, mu n1, which is again equal to mu square n2, so mu square n2 plus mu n2. So factor out n2, so p is n2 times quantity mu square plus mu. And replacing N2 from this equation here, N2 is W minus P divided by mu square plus 1. So N2 is equal to P from this equation, P divided by mu square plus mu. And we substitute this value of N2 in this equation here. So P is W minus P over mu square plus mu times quantity mu square plus 1. So transpose this to the left, so we have P times 1 plus mu square plus 1 over mu square plus mu equals W. So cross multiply, so P times mu square plus mu plus mu square plus 1 divided by mu square plus mu equals W. <laughs> so we copy it again. So as I said by algebra, so P times quantity mu square plus mu times 1 is mu square plus mu plus mu square plus 1 over mu square plus mu equals w. Finally, p is mu 
mu times quantity mu plus 1. This is factor out mu here. Then divided by this denominator, which is when simplified, 2 mu square plus mu square plus 1. So that's the value of P. So P is now expressed in terms of mu and W, and we cannot simplify this anymore. For the second example, problem 2, a plank 3.5 meters long rests in a horizontal position upon two inclined planes, one at 60 degrees and the other at 45 degrees with the horizontal. If the angle of friction at all surfaces of contact is 20 degrees, determine the limits by computing x sub 1 and x sub 2 as indicated in the figure of the position where a load W can be placed without causing motion. Neglect the weight of the plank. So this is the first position. And let's solve for the limit of x1 such that there will be no motion of the plank. And this is x sub 2 for the second situation. So first, so for the solution, let's have here the normal perpendicular to this inclined force surface. Then because when W is closer to this left end, this left end tends to slide down along this plane and therefore friction should be, maximum friction F1 max should be up to the left along the plane. So the resultant of N1 and F1 should, which is denoted by R1 should be somewhere here and it makes an angle of 20 degrees with the normal. So remember that the angle between the normal and the vertical is also the angle of inclination 45. And since the normal or the reaction at one is here, and this angle is the angle of friction, which is 20 degrees. So therefore, this remaining angle, the angle that R1 makes with the vertical is 25 degrees, 45 minus 20. On the other side, we have N2 perpendicular to the 60 degree angle. The angle between the vertical and N2 is 60, and since this tends to slide down, then this should tend to slide up. So friction should be going down along this plane, and therefore the resultant of F2 max and N2 would be somewhere here, which makes an angle of 20 degrees with N2. And because the vertical and N2 makes an angle of angle of inclination 60 degrees, the angle that <coughs> R2 makes with the vertical is 80 degrees. So if we draw the force triangle, we have the weight, then R1, which makes an angle of 25 degrees with the vertical, and R2, which makes an angle of 80 degrees with the vertical. So that's 25 degrees. This is R2, so this is 80 degrees, 60 plus 20. So 80 plus 25 is 105, therefore this is 180 minus 105, 75 degrees. By sign law, we want to solve for R2 only. Then after that, we sum up moment about 1 to solve for X1. So R2 as to sine of 25 equals W as to sine of 75. R2 in terms of W is equal to 0.4075 of W. Then take note, the only component of R2 that has moment about 1 is the vertical component. The horizontal component passes through that point. So summation moment about 1 equals 0. So R2 cosine of 80 times 3.5 equals W times X1. So canceling out uh, W, then the given expression will give us X sub 1. So X sub 1 equals 0.2659 meters. Then we proceed to the other side. So again, we have here N2. <coughs> then friction. This point two here tends to slide down, so friction maximum should be opposite to the direction of bending motion, F2 max going that way. So the re resultant of these two, I'll call it R2, would be somewhere here, and that makes an angle with the normal of 20 degrees. And remember that the vertical and the normal makes an angle of 60 degrees, so that the Reaction 2 and the vertical makes an angle of 40 degrees, 60 minus 20. Then on the other side, we do N1 and friction. Since this tends to slide up because this end will tend to slide down, so friction should be along this plane and it is going down. 
and therefore the reaction one should be somewhere here to the above of n1 which makes an angle of 20 degrees again and because the angle between the normal and the vertical is also the angle of inclination 45 degrees the total angle that r1 makes with the vertical is 65 degrees so by doing the force triangle we have the weight vertical then r1 which makes an angle with the vertical of 65 degrees so this is 65 degrees and r2 which makes an angle with the vertical of 40 degrees so that's 40 degrees 40 plus 65 is again 105 therefore this is 75 degrees by sign law we solve for r1 so r1 as to sign 40 equals w as to sign 75 and then the last procedure would be summation moment about 2 equals 0 so r1 equals 0 0.6655 of w so summation moment about 2 equals 0 again only the vertical component of r1 has moment about 0 0.2 so it is 0.6655 w times cosine of 65 times 3.5 then equals w times x2 so considering out w then we have x2 equal to 0.9844 meters then for our last example determine the smallest force t required to start the 300 newton block so it will start if motion is bending to the right so therefore we analyze the upper block first let's have the free body diagram so 200 newtons downward then we have the tension in the cable so it makes an angle 25 degrees and we have n1 <coughs> friction should be to the right opposite to tension and it is 0.3 of n1 because the coefficient of friction is 0.3 so summation forces horizontal equals 0 so 0.3 n1 equals t cosine 25 so that means we can express t as 0.3 n1 over cosine 25 next summation forces vertical equals 0 so we have n1 plus t sine of 25 minus 200 equals 0 so replacing t by 0.3 n1 over cosine 25 0.3 n1 over cosine 25 times sine 25 equals 200 or minus 200 equals 0 though from here we can solve for n1 n1 is equal to 200 divided by quantity 1 plus 0.3 sine 25 or 0.3 tangent of 25 and close so n1 equals 175.455 newtons then we draw the Free body diagram of the lower block so we have we have to transmit n1 and friction which is now to the left 0.3 of n1 then the weight of the 300 newton block so 0.3 of 175.455 to the left then we have n2 then t to the right and therefore friction should be at the lower base should be to the left and this is equal to mu sub s which is tangent of angle of friction times n2 and that is p so to solve for p we first solve for n2 summation forces y equals 0 so n2 plus equals 300 plus 175.455 n2 is 475.455 newtons then summation forces x equals 0 so p is 0.3 of 175.455 plus tangent 20 degrees times 475.455 so solving for p p must be greater equal to 2 to 5.7 newton so the smallest force p required to start the 300 newton block is 2 to 5.7 and any value greater than this will cause the 300 newton block to move to the right so thank you for watching and i hope that you were able to understand the explanation and the discussion solution to these three problems See you for my future videos.